Tucked in the hills of Virginia sits Montpelier, the estate of James Madison, distinguished member of Congress, Secretary of State under President Thomas Jefferson, and fourth president of the United States. Each year, over 100,000 people visit this historic site, expecting to glimpse into the mind of Madison and his role in founding a nation. Instead, they'll find a distorted version of American history. Madison, a celebrated founding father, is lauded as the father of the Constitution due to his role at the Constitutional Convention, key author of the Federalist Papers, and architect of the Bill of Rights. The estate which was built by Madison's father served as Madison's beloved childhood home and launching pad for his political career. After finishing his last term as president, Madison returned to Montpelier with his wife Dolly. He lived there until his death in 1836. On the surface, the home is a freeze frame of life in the early 19th century. Storied portraits adorn the walls, leather-bound books fill shelves, and polished silver sits on the table ready for a meal. That's where the accurate portrayal of Montpelier ends. Move past that and visitors find history manipulated. For example, none of the five exhibits officially listed on the website are about James Madison. All but one are about race, slavery, or Jim Crow. In 2017, Montpelier introduced The Mere Distinction of Color, a series of exhibits on slavery. Some are informative, providing a history of slavery and describing what life was like for those enslaved. One portion features a contemporary video on slavery's lasting legacies. The Montpelier website states, from mass incarceration to the achievement gap, to housing discrimination and the vicious cycles of poverty, violence, and lack of opportunity throughout America's inner cities, the legacies of 200 years of African-American bondage are still with us. That video features Dr. Hassan Kwame Jeffries, the vice president of Montpelier's board of directors. In his writings on slavery, Jeffries has said, some say slavery was our country's original sin, but it's much more than that. Slavery is our country's origin. In 2018, Montpelier produced their set of guidelines for how historical sites should teach slavery and engage descendant communities. These guidelines state that American history should be approached in a spirit of restorative justice, and staff should undergo significant and ongoing anti-racist training, which includes interpreting difficult history, deconstructing and interrogating white privilege, white supremacy, and systemic racism, and engaging visitors on these subjects. For example, in the gift shop, placed among books by famous biographers and historians, are the works of critical race theorist ta Coates, Robin DiAngelo, Nicole Hannah-Jones, and Ibram X. Kendi. Montpelier visitors have expressed concerns with the lack of exhibits on Madison in the Constitution. None of this happened by accident or mistake. The ideological shifting of Montpelier was a calculated decision. On multiple occasions, the leadership of the Montpelier Foundation has involved Southern Poverty Law Center Associates, the same organization that labeled conservative organizations such as Family Research Council hate groups. They've been touting anti-racist curricula long before the New York Times' much-criticized 1619 project came out. Remember the mere distinction of color exhibits and Professor Jeffries? the one who said slavery is our country's origin? He's the chairman of SPLC's Learning for Justice Advisory Board. There's a great deal of overlap between the exhibits at Montpelier and the SPLC curriculum. For example, all eight books featured in Montpelier's Reading Nook for Children, an exhibit aimed at teaching young kids about race and slavery, are recommended in the SPLC's K-5 publication. Here's Dr. William Allen, a former Heritage Fellow, respected scholar, and former chairman of the United States Commission on Civil Rights, commenting on the SPLC. Some more than 40 years ago when I served on the Commission on Civil Rights, I praised highly of Morris Dees who founded the Southern Poverty Law Center. And I did so because he began a work that was important, valuable, and made an, a contribution to strengthen this society. But what has happened at the SPLC in the short time frame of recent history has been the colonization of the SPLC by an alien ideology and approach. The alien ideologies he's referring to are Marxism and critical race theory. Their spread is not isolated to Montpelier. James Madison's home is just one of 27 historic sites owned by the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Abraham Lincoln's cottage is another. The National Trust is a private nonprofit established by an act of Congress. 
Some of their donors include the Ford Foundation and George Soros. As the home of the father of the Constitution, Montpelier's message should tell the whole story of James Madison, the good and the bad. But instead, Madison, a significant historical individual by any measure, is diminished and a slanted ideological picture is presented. This is part of a broader strategy to portray American history solely through a lens of race and slavery and exile the revolutionary ideas of America. Equality, separation of powers, limited government, rule of law, to name just a few, into a fading background. Maybe, this strategy suggests, there's nothing from our history that Americans can proudly unite around. Maybe the Constitution is not a document worth preserving. I mention that in order to illustrate what in the larger frame is being attempted with regard to U.S. history and culture. So just as it has been taken over its SPLC, now the effort is to expand and take over uh, our understanding of American culture in order to remake our history. You might be asking yourself, can't we nip this in the bud by refusing to patronize the Montpelier estate or any of these other sites? Unfortunately, it's not that simple. Montpelier received funds from the state of Virginia for special projects and to develop anti-racist curriculum for use in the state's public schools. Remember the SPLC? They also often send curricula they handcraft directly to schools, bypassing parents. In short, the ideology being touted at Montpelier isn't staying there. It's spreading. Heritage Foundation researcher Brenda Hefera put these findings in a report. The Montpelier Foundation responded, claiming the report was full of falsehoods intended to advance a supremacist ideology. The Montpelier Foundation also said, that tactic, making black people the frightening other, is historically common for those too fragile to accept the telling of full history. Of course, Montpelier didn't engage with the arguments presented in the report. Instead, they just labeled the report's author, Brenda Hefera, the Heritage Foundation, and respected scholars like Dr. Allen, racists. Patriotic Americans don't want to eliminate education on race and slavery. Slavery is a painful yet undeniable aspect of our history. However, advocates of critical race theory place slavery as the driving force behind America. They don't acknowledge that it has always contradicted our principles and that our founding fathers created a nation that could and eventually did eliminate it. Retelling America's story means we confront our failures as well as celebrate our victories. Montpelier and historic sites like it should not be places of division and resentment, but ones that offer hope and a better future for America.